Hey everybody, it's Party Leet, and today we're taking a look at some great deals from the Steam Summer Sale. 10 games available for less than 10 bucks a piece. If you're looking for more options, check out the video linked in the pinned comment down below. But otherwise, with timestamps below as usual, let's dive into some strategy, city building, sim, and management games. Ancestors Legacy did a great job of bringing real-time squad-based tactics into a medieval time frame, mixing light base building with mechanics centered around flanking, day-night cycles, weather, and the prevalence of melee combat. The fighting in Ancestors Legacy is quite brutal, spread across multiple historical campaigns, featuring stealthy raids, siege battles, and skirmishes across multiple factions, with multiplayer against the AI and against friends that plays similar to the classic Company of Heroes approach with its own twists, where the various resource nodes are actually represented by villages that are capable of defending themselves with individual people doing the actual resource gathering within. The four playable factions in the base game provide a decent bit of variety, and the DLC adds the Saracens alongside a new narrative campaign at a great price too. Whether you're managing the morale of your troops through the use of flanking and special abilities, or timing your attacks according to the weather and time of day, there are some fun mechanics to engage with here that all prioritize the importance of tactical thinking over the rate at which you can click. To that end, the AI can provide a decent bit of a challenge on harder difficulties especially, and so I'd say Ancestors Legacy is well worth picking up at this price, even if you can't get a couple of your buddies on board. The single player campaigns are quite fun too, after all, but if you can get some of your friends on board for some multiplayer action, that's all the better for the tactical brutality the game provides. Partisans 1941 is currently 85% off, just about 6 bucks, and it brings the stealth tactics genre to the eastern front of World War II. After escaping from a prison camp, you find yourself in charge of an eclectic group of partisans, each with their own unique abilities, strengths, weaknesses, and various ways in which they make themselves either an asset or liability for the various missions you'll be taking them on. When you're not out on missions, you're spending time upgrading your camp, finding ways to forage or fish or otherwise survive off the land as you hide from the occupiers and seek opportunities to strike back whenever possible. All the familiar trappings of the genre are very much present in Partisans 1941, from scoping out guard patrols and watching their lines of sight, to planning your movement timings and using your special abilities to eliminate or otherwise throw off potential threats to your operation. But the game adds its own flavor in a few different ways. Resource management and how looting ties into the resources you'll have available at your camp is one such way, but the impact of injuries sustained mid-mission is another compelling one, where you'll see a direct impact to your character's performance even if you manage to heal a wound. A bad enough injury will cause trouble until you're able to return to base, increasing the risk factor in an interesting and tense way, especially when you consider just how scary things can get when you engage in melee or gunfights. While the game definitely has a bit of jank to it, and at launch it had some issues that prevented me from recommending it outright, it's been improved along the way, and at 6 bucks, I can most certainly suggest picking it up for some good stealth tactics action. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous remains one of the best CRPGs of recent times, and I can highly recommend it at full price, let alone on this massive discount. Apart from being a faithful adaptation of the Pathfinder tabletop RPG system, Everything from its extremely in-depth character creation and leveling, to the storytelling, to the blend of turn-based and real-time with pause combat, is executed exquisitely with tons of options to explore and enjoy regardless of your preferred character archetypes. Things escalate very quickly in Wrath of the Righteous, introducing you to an enjoyable cast of characters and throwing you into a dark storyline without wasting any time with introductions. While the Pathfinder rule set can be daunting at times, the game does an excellent job of communicating rules and concepts to the player, making things rather intuitive right from the get-go. A challenge for CRPGs converting dense tabletop systems, and let me tell you, Pathfinder is a dense tabletop system. You'll sneak around in the shadows, avoiding combat where you're outmatched or otherwise positioning your party for optimal opening moves in combat. You'll engage in deep conversations where your alignment and background will determine conversation options. You'll take on larger-than-life enemies, and you'll eventually lead Crusader armies as an added layer on top of the typical CRPG systems to help keep things fresh and exciting in this tremendously long epic of an adventure. There's a lot to do in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, and there are a lot of ways to go about doing them. The game is an absolute blast. 
Blood Bowl 2 is currently 85% off, partly thanks to its age, and partly thanks to the sequel having released relatively recently. Be that as it may, the sequel still has some ways to go before it provides as much entertainment value as Blood Bowl 2, at least in my humble opinion. So, if you'd been holding off on picking it up because of the pending release of Blood Bowl 3, now is a great time to pick it up after all. Set in the Warhammer Fantasy Battles universe, but requiring absolutely zero prior knowledge of the setting, Blood Bowl 2 pits the various factions of the setting against each other on the battlefield of Gridiron. That's right, you play turn-based, dice-based, tactical American football as anything from orcs and elves of various inclinations to dwarfs, oversized rats, and humans and more besides. Asymmetry is a huge part of the fun here, as each faction plays wildly differently with different strengths and weaknesses, and everything from roster management to planning how you level your players up is an absolute joy, since persistent teams mean you'll watch your custom-built teams grow over seasons, playing against the AI and against friends in a very robust season management system alike. I can think of few games that struck a chord in the way Blood Bowl 2 did. There's something special about building and managing a team of miscreants, tracking their stats across multiple seasons only to see a brutal injury end their career if they somehow manage to dodge death on the playing field. There's a lot of interesting moving parts both on and off the field here, and I can highly recommend grabbing the game with a couple of friends especially, since it's best enjoyed in multiplayer, though playing it alone can be a pretty good time too. Iron Harvest is currently 80% off, and despite it currently sitting on mixed recent reviews on Steam, there is a solidly fun experience that's well worth diving into. Yes, I agree that the game would have been well served with some more post-launch support, but for about 6 bucks, you can't go wrong with this diesel punk company of heroes-like real-time strategy game that is set in the same alternate history universe of Scythe, where World War I never ended, only evolved to include these massive mechanical monstrosities on the battlefield. Each faction has its own flavor between units, the buildings that produce them, and the mechs that operate alongside them, and they're a joy to explore and experiment with alongside more traditional equipment like anti-tank guns and artillery littered across the battlefield as you try to secure resource nodes and take cover behind crumbling buildings as mechs charge through them or lob massive shots into them instead. The single-player campaign is a bit of an homage to the classics, and there are multiplayer and challenge game modes besides, especially fun to play with or against your friends. I think Iron Harvest is a blast to play with some really creative ideas and some cool visual executions to go with them, and at this current price, it's an absolute steal. Planet Zoo is currently 75% off, and the base game on its own will provide you with hours upon hours of fun for less than 10 bucks, with the DLC adding much more after you've exhausted the year after year of free updates and compelling systems and mechanics packed in the base game. Planet Zoo puts you in charge of managing zoos in a few different ways, from a challenge-free sandbox mode, to a number of challenge scenarios, to a franchise mode that has you manage multiple zoos across the world, tackling the challenges of the local biome while needing to balance your budget, your staff and guest happiness, and perhaps most importantly, the health and well-being of your animals. Not only are all these systems very compelling, they're all made that much more interesting by the amazing level of customization you have over every visual aspect of your zoo. The same customization and building mechanics present in Planet Coaster make their appearance here, but there's something really special and magical about seeing a bunch of beautifully rendered and animated animals interact with spaces that you've built for them, playing with toys or navigating jungle gyms and more besides as guests walk around learning about the species. For those interested in exploring the conservation side of the conversation, there are mechanics built around releasing animals into the wild and managing breeding programs to ensure healthy progeny to return to the world, but even if you simply decide to dive into the freeform sandbox modes, there's so much cool stuff to explore and play with, and DLC will add even more building pieces and animals to experiment with, and the whole package, honestly, is a great purchase, but as I said before, the base game alone will keep you entertained for hours on end. Suzerain is currently 70% off, and at about 6 bucks, it's a must-buy if you're even remotely interested in political intrigue and Cold War-era shenanigans. Set in a fictional world with the historical parallels to ours, 
this text-based RPG has you playing as a newly elected president of an ailing nation. Domestic terrorism, religious fundamentalism, civil rights movements, political violence, foreign threats, and economic collapse all apply pressure as you start your term, and as you play through your term as president, your ability to tackle all of these aforementioned troubles will determine the fate of your nation, its people, and your own life. The writing in the game is absolutely top-notch, with characters that you love to hate, hate to love, and learn to tolerate alike. And for anybody who ever said they'd do a better job if they were president, this game does a good job of showing you just how many forces are at work with every decision. From passing bills to ordering the movement of troops and from diplomatic meetings with foreign heads of state and business magnates alike, there are tons of interesting threads to pull at and the game really leaves things open for you to explore all your options, encouraging multiple playthroughs that can end up playing out in surprisingly different ways. At the end of a run, the game outlines your successes and failures and even indicates where your run sits on the political spectrum, inviting you to explore other options and where they might take you instead. I can highly recommend Suzerain as a very unique and fresh experience well worth diving into. Phantom Doctrine takes us to the Cold War in our own real history, putting you in charge of either the KGB or the CIA alongside a mysterious third option that unlocks with New Game Plus, taking you through the twists and turns of your typical espionage plot with you at the helm. At 90% off, this game is well worth buying as an excellent turn-based tactics game with a robust strategic layer that will have you moving your hideout from place to place to avoid getting caught as you research all sorts of advanced spy technologies while training agents, kitting them out appropriately, and acquiring a variety of tools as well as abilities to use on and off the battlefield. Capture enemy agents and install trigger phrases before releasing them to gain control of them mid-battle when you next cross paths, for example. Or maybe you'd rather simply interrogate and kill them in the hunt for intel you can use to figure out where the next main mission is, hopping across the world and sometimes finding yourself in the middle of real-world historical events. Sneak around before engagements begin, collecting intel, shutting off cameras and lights, and otherwise maintaining a low profile. Sometimes, with the help of disguises and clever maneuvering, you can complete a mission without firing a single shot, especially if you have the right agents on hand with the right special abilities trained just the right way. But at other times, you can't stop things from going hot. And if your agents get captured, maybe they'll get killed. Or maybe they'll escape. But if they do, can you trust they haven't been turned by the enemy? There are so many cool ideas with Phantom Doctrine, all extremely well executed. Though the mid-game can drag on with its procedurally generated missions, slowing things down a touch, I can still highly recommend this excellent game set during one of my favorite time periods of modern history. Warhammer 40k Mechanicus is currently 75% off, and you've probably heard me recommend it a few times over the years already, and that's because it's just that good. Still one of the best Warhammer 40k games in the genre in recent years, this turn-based tactics game doesn't require any pre-existing knowledge of the setting for you to enjoy the epic battle between your more machine-than-man faction and the long-buried machine empire whose tomb they stumble upon during an expedition. You'll listen to some absolutely amazing music unlike anything else you've heard before as you kit out your squads and send them into tombs to engage in dungeon exploration, going from room to room, tackling various random events, and jumping from battle to battle as well. The dungeon exploration encourages you to seek out potential boons at the risk of stumbling across debuffs, and at the same time, escalating the threat for every bit of time you waste roaming around. Beyond any single dungeon, the campaign as a whole is always at risk should you operate too slowly, escalating towards inevitable doom as the machine empire rises slowly from its resting place to present an insurmountable threat. But beyond the unit upgrades, research, and strategizing happening on board your ship, the turn-based tactical battles themselves are also quite fresh in a few ways. They present a reasonable threat and by eschewing the idea of hit chances, instead saying you're always guaranteed to hit both your own and your enemy's units, they manage to represent the mechanical precision of both sides of the battlefield, while also letting you know that every failure of yours is your own doing, and not the result of a bad dice roll. 
Warhammer 40k Mechanicus has some great ideas and some great solutions to things that typically plague indie games. It is a joy to play for a variety of reasons, and I highly recommend checking it out. Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 is another Warhammer 40k game that does not require prior knowledge of the setting to enjoy to its fullest, boasting some absolutely fantastic space combat mechanics that represent a wide array of unique factions with different approaches to combat from range, in melee, and through boarding. While the multiplayer scene is sadly pretty much dead, you can still play with friends, so I can highly recommend grabbing it with a few friends and beyond that, the single player experience is well worth checking out at this price point too. The former includes building custom fleets out of a huge selection of ship types for each faction, balancing point costs with combat capabilities to build fleets that can perform in different ways to tackle different threats from the different asymmetrically designed factions, a particular highlight of Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. The latter, that is to say the single-player campaigns, have you pursuing similar concepts while tied into a narrative experience, sending you from planet to planet to engage in battles while also maintaining a larger military-industrial complex that's providing you with ships that you can use to fight battles and additional resources besides. Now, I don't want to make it sound too linear, you are choosing which planets to go to and strategizing exactly which threats to tackle and in which order. It's not so linear as to just take you from point A to point B, and there is a fair bit of decision making that you'll be doing between battles as well, which is where most of the fun is had, at least for myself personally. There are many reasons to pick this game up though, and at this current price, you're looking at some great value for your money with just the single player experience alone. But again, if you can get it with a couple of buddies, there's really nothing like it. But there you have it folks, 10 games for 10 bucks a piece or less, each worth more than the current price tag on it. If you found something you liked in this video, consider hitting that like button, and if you're looking for even more recommendations, check out the video linked on screen right now. Don't forget to subscribe for more strategy, sim, and management gaming, and as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis, y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.